when I was selling chocolate uh, back in the UK about 100 years ago when dinosaurs ruled the earth, <laughs> um, that's stolen from, from John Schneider, I'm sorry John, I shouldn't say that. Um, yeah, I was, a, I was a, a chocolate salesman way back then and it's kind of been a long, long journey from, um, from uh, there. Um, to um, suddenly uh, get myself into the uh, marketing department of the, ab of the chocolate company and then into the advertising agency and then into the commercials bit of the advertising agency and then uh, started my own production company and then deciding I wanted to make lots of commercials, so I made lots of commercials and then when I woke up one morning I said, hell, I want to be making some films here. You know? <laughs> And then, yeah, I guess that was it. So doing the, you know, was um, my fourth film. So, yeah, actually, it hasn't, it hasn't changed a lot since um, um, uh, since those days. Uh, yeah, the story remained the same. The scenario changed um, as I got more experience of how to write and put things together. But so uh, the, the actual concept and the punchline, if you like, of the movie never changed because mm -hmm. that was the original concept. But. Um, yeah, it got more sophisticated as time went on, obviously, because when you're a chocolate salesman, you don't actually write sophisticated scripts. <laughs> <laughs> I look back and I go, oh my God, really? Uh, <laughs> there, there you go. Um, well, as an independent filmmaker, and that's kind of what happens, you know, um, nobody was going to, uh, studios weren't going to pick this film up um, because it's... Uh, when you see it, it's a little bit controversial, <laughs> and it has, um, it has, particularly, particularly during the, the political time, it was election year, what have uh -huh. and uh, so uh, the studios weren't really in favour of the film, so mm -hmm. that's okay, uh, so we went out and, and, and put the thing together as, as an independent production, and uh, was, I, I write my own stuff, um, so, uh, and when, when I, and I, therefore I direct it, because Obviously, why I write it, I guess, because I'm right. a director. And then, then you, then you've got that terrible moment where you've got to take that hat off and put on a suit and walk around and raise money and do things <laughs> like that, which I actually hate. But you've kind of got to do that. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we, do, we pulled the thing together. I was very, very lucky here in in Texas. We found some wonderful backers for this film. One in one guy in particular, who just um, effectively backed the entire production of the film which is wonderful so I'm blessed for that. Uh, I was on a, I was making a commercial in um, in Ukraine of all places and uh, this cameraman said to me uh, you know something you know you, you, you've got to make this film and you realize you're not gonna have any luck at all until you've made this film because you pr promised yourself you're gonna make it and you, you've got all the wherewithal to do it so you've got to make Doomby mm. and um, so I thought well, okay well, all right, maybe you're right, you know, and so I, I, I focused on it, and then it became very easy. It was all financed and ready to go. It wasn't easy to make it, <laughs> but it was financed and ready to go in um, yeah, about four months after that, four or five months. Wow. And um, I went back to him afterwards, and I said, Dean, you know, thank the Lord you told me that. That was tremendous. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, what's Doonby? And I said, the film you told me about, you know, you, you told me to make, you know, which I'd uh, he said, you, I never heard of it. And I suddenly realized I'd never told him um, anything about the movie. I, I assumed I had, but he didn't know what I was talking about. So I was, whoa, okay, all right. So it was kind of, I mean, it's kind of very strange yeah. things which went on throughout the making of this film, actually, good and bad, but it's been, wow. it's been a journey. I'll tell you, it's been a journey. I was very, very fortunate to get John, who's incredible. He I was, mean, yeah. Um, what you see with John Snyder is what you get. He's an incredible, nice guy. Um, he's a very talented man, hugely experienced. And he, uh, I mean, I've, this is the best, in my view, the best thing he's ever done. He's, he's tremendous performance. I mean, you, you know John's a professional actor, but this is a, a kind of, he, he totally inhabits the character. He's wonderful. And uh, once I got John, and then we got Ernie, and... Uh, which is great, and they, they, they all uh, they all like the script, and they all uh, like the, the message that we were tr trying to get across there. And so I was very blessed that they they came and worked 
for rather less than they normally would. You know. <laughs> And we got a great ensemble cast, actually. And yes, the, we did. We did. I mean, we, um, Jen Gotson was terrific. You know, she's in Frost Nixon. And uh, Robert Darby's a bit of a legend, you know. Uh, but what we managed to do is get everybody in for a few days. Like Robert came in, and he was a very influential uh, character in the movie, but he was on, the, on set for three days. You know, we just you know, oh. maximised every moment we had with him. You know. <laughs> Um, and similarly with Ernie, Ernie was again a big part of the movie, but he was only in Smithfield for about six days, I think, or maybe seven. I honestly can't remember. Um, so we we kind of worked it and ran that way. But, and Jennifer O'Neill, of course, who was from the summer of '42. Like every man over the age of 50 has a fantasy about the summer of 42, and there was Jennifer O'Neill. I thought, wow, really? This is the lady that that's just. Forget that for a moment, let's not go there. <laughs> well, um, somebody said to me, uh, excuse me, I have a glass of water, if I may. Um, you want to put Norman McCorvey in this film? And, uh, and I said, who's Norman McCorvey? You know, I've never heard of her. And they said, well, she's Jane Roe or Roe v. Wade. Yeah. I said, really? Well, why would particularly I want her in the film? Well, I said, oh, well, she's, you know, she's got a different view on life these days. So I said, well, well, okay, well, where does she live? And um, nobody had the slightest idea where she lived. You know? And I uh, said, what, um, um, and I said, can she act? And they said, well, probably not, but you're supposed to be a director. <laughs> 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 nice, okay. Uh, I've got all about that. And so then I was uh, um, in San Antonio, uh, just talking to somebody, this attorney, and um, on something totally different. And uh, I just happened to mention that, why I mentioned it. I had no idea, and he said, well, you know, I'm her attorney. Oh, wow. And I said, what? And he said, and you know where she lives? And I said, I have no idea. He said, she lives in Smithville, Texas. Oh, how <laughs> crazy. And I said, you oh, are wow. kidding, you are kidding. And even more amazing, five minutes later, the phone rang, it was Norman McCorby calling him. No, no, it, it really wasn't designed, you know, to say, uh, I want to reach mainstream. It was, it was the story I'm trying to tell. Mm -hmm. um, it, um, cause it, this is, it happens to people in life all the time, you know, it's, it's not, it, this, isn't, this isn't a sermon. Right. Um, it's people uh, leading their, their lives um, in the best way they can, some of them dysfunctionally, some of them not, you know, it's people trying to um, enjoy themselves, or some, some, you know, you know when I'm, I'm try, I never wanted to be judgmental about this, it was, it was just, but I hope I'm not. In actual fact, an Erin Way was who we talked about uh, was so perfect because um, there's nothing judgmental about her because um, mm -hmm. she's such a sympathetic character. Um, so I guess it was just the challenges that face people in everyday life uh, in a small town. You know, it's again. I suppose when I mentioned Tennessee Williams, but equally I suppose John Steinbeck, who was a very big influence on me because he was. I just loved everything he did because he was able to tell stories about little towns all the time, which are a microcosm for human nature on a much bigger scale. And um, it doesn't, doesn't matter whether you're talking about countries and cities or whether you're talking about a little bitty town of two or two, three thousand people. It's, it's the same, same dynamic. Uh, 